Right, but guys, we just had a bit of a interruption there, technical difficulty, shall we say? So yeah, me random though that, like you just alluded to, we were just talking about sentencing for for paedophiles and rapists, and then just automatically throws out. So what? Where would you go with that? Thank you. Saying where, what's the next step? What do we need to yeah, do next? What, what, I mean, what, what's the next step? Because obviously, many of us aren't happy with the sentencing guidelines for sex offenders, for paedophiles and rapists. So what steps can we now take as a collective to do something about that? I've seen, I watch America quite a lot and they're talking about chemical castration, but how, how are they going to bring it up? Human rights and stuff like that were so politically correct that I don't think they'd ever do it because someone will say, oh, you're nullifying my sex drive. There's nothing to say that I'm actually going to reoffend when I get out. So these sex offenders have got human rights, which they violate on their victims, but yet we have to give them um, human rights, which is just disgusting for me. Q, can you see on the screen the comments here on the right? No, I can't, no. Right, no, no. what it is, there's comments coming in now as we're talking. Okay. Uh, there's, people, there's people that are connecting, uh, and yeah, it's coming on now, so people are like, right, guys, so everyone that's just tuned in, I'll just let you know, Q can't see the comments right now, we'll see them after. Um, obviously, everyone knows who Big Q is, being through the system, stand-up guy, intelligent, knows what he's talking about. Uh, oh, wait, I, I think I can. Yeah. Um, if you click on the screen there, does it say banners, brand and comments for you? Kenneth Grinley? As That's just the one, me? brother. That's the one, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. these people these people are listening live now to us. So what we're doing, guys, just to, just to bring everyone up to date, um, a subscriber told me about an app called StreamYard. Me and uh, Q have done a 40-minute recording, which is private at the moment, which I'm going to make public. We're just trying this out to see how things go. Um, but, yeah, so Q's on the channel. This is live, guys. It is literally 11 a.m., 11 p.m. even. Uh, we're just talking about sex offenders. So go on, Q. So what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Because when they're in prison, for those that don't know, what it, when the sex offenders are in prison, you film them coming back from church because that was another video that I stole from your brother, I'll be honest. So... For, for anyone that doesn't know about prison, where are sex offenders housed when they are in prison? Are they in general population or are they segregated on the protected wings? They're on what we call the VP wings, the vulnerable prisoners wing. Um, they're not allowed to, to mix with us. They tend to have um, separate workshops for them. They'll have certain jobs where it would be just the nonces, you know. Um, but, yeah, they're not allowed to mix with us for obvious reasons. In certain jails, like High Down, when the nonces are traveling, they so they have separate free flows for the sex offenders. But but an alarm bell rings, so you when you hear the this alarm, certain a bell going on in the hallway, that means the nonces are on the move. But I think that's to let any other staff know. Don't let anybody on the walkways right now. Is that like we call that a freeze up here, bro? We call that a freeze. Orange light flashes all around the prison. That that way you, you put on hold wherever you are. If you're coming back from visits, yeah. it's a freeze. Yeah, yeah. Coming off the wings to work, going to workshops, coming back from workshops, it's a freeze, bro. So they can move freely within the prison. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, I, but from many of prisons that I've been to, the sex offenders usually get the best wings. They'll get they'll get the best jobs. They'll be on the best wing. With the best They'll, showers and the cleanest showers. And... Um, but they can have that. You can have the best showers. You can have the best jobs. You're still a fucking nonce, mate. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I, I remember there's, there's footage on my channel uh, filmed in Lou's prison uh, from, a, from a former prisoner, shall we say, that shows these sex offenders coming back from uh, church, getting absolutely yeah. verbally abused out the window. Every single day, anytime them nonces are on the thing, it was just normal. Everybody's out there. I don't, I don't, be honest with you, I didn't really scream and shout outside windows. I'm too grown for that. But yeah. it'll always be funny listening to the, the comments and there's Jimmy Savile. There's yeah. Jimmy Savile. Savile. <laughs> <laughs> All usual stuff. I'll tell you what, brother, just cute. If you just look at that comment there from Shahib Hood, that is an, he's a, he's an Asian guy, he's a brother. Uh, Shahid from Huddersfield, brother. Just saying, yes, big Q there. Walaikum well, salam, my bro. Philip Brown, love. Andrew Hold Taylor. On. Philip Brown, bumped into bumped you into near the windmill pub in Crawley. I don't go to the pub, mate. <laughs> I know you that, are. 
Philip, I remember you, brother. Last year, if I remember correctly. Um, respect to everyone messaging. You know, bro, this is the thing. So this is something that I've not done. I tried it with a girl that I know the other day. Just did it as a, an unpublished video. Um, so it's like there if I wanted to put it up, but it was just testing the connection. Tried it with earphones. Tried it like this, and then this mm -hmm. is the first proper one I've done. I'm not used to asking questions, and Q's been very generous to give him his time. Recently, oh, how, how long have you been out, Q? Two and a half weeks. Two this time, weeks? yeah, I'll be three weeks on Friday. Three weeks on three Friday. Three weeks on man. Friday. Yeah, and then like I said, but with the sex offenders, if you was in charge of the prison, would you rid away with the VP wings, obviously? General population, mate. Stick them in with everyone else. Where the prisoners will be judge, jury, and executioner, brother. You you would let me tell you something. If they they'll well, would they think twice, obviously, you know, but it would be a good deterrent. It'd be a very good you know, deterrent. You know what, right? I since I've come out of prison, I've been through it, I did some paedophile once in me. And what oh, flabbergasted me, the first thing I did, they caught this kid twice previous. He was under investigation from the police. And he turned up a third time and was stung by this team for the second time, brother. And it's like, so when the when the message is what they think to be kids on these apps, these paedophiles, right? And it, they, they think it's kids that they're talking to, I'm going to meet the rape. They, they're literally like, anyone with a logical sense would think, well, hang on, I've been caught twice previous, once previous, twice previous. This is going to be a sting. This they're going to they're setting me up, but their sexual urges get the better of them. Where common sense fucks off, they turn up to think they're in some twelve-year-old kid that's looking at some fat sixty-odd-year-old man, right? Who wants to touch statutory rape because obviously the age of consent is sixteen. Anything below that statutory rape, and it just so for me, I honestly believe you can you can rehabilitate general population offenders, but I don't think you can ever. Um, rehabilitate a paedophile i think it's a mindset i think it's yeah, uh, they're, they're wired that way that's the way they're wired they're sexual like their preferences are what they are you can't you know some people are like brunettes you know yeah they like children there's not yeah. you know like they, they're not going to one day be like you know what i'm gonna go for this 35 year old broad over here now i've changed my, mm -hmm. i don't like them anymore no like they're wired that way and yeah. The, then that comes back into it, the castration. Would they do that in the UK? Probably not. We're too soft here. Realistically, yeah. like you're saying, because of the, the human rights and all of that, they're not getting all it. But then you've got to give them life in jail. You've got to give them some, you know. You there's, there's no what, what annoys me is I covered a few stories yesterday about a guy that was caught with a few hundred images, um, child abuse images, rage it, because for those that don't know, Child abuse images, category A, category B, category C. C is classed as the lowest. I think any form of any picture of a of sexual nature of a child is disgusting, but A is the worst. This guy had A, B, and C, and he got a eight months sus suspended for two years. What deterrent does that send to next man that's thinking, wow, you don't go to jail for this shit? How are you giving them fucking probation and suspended sentences, man? Like I'm, I, I think I mentioned this a second ago that I read something, something so it must have been yours from you where yeah. I read it. Like yo, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit, I'm a bit pissed off right now. Like it's it's it, next level, bro, isn't it? It really is. And the thing is, uh, the thing is, a, a lot of people think that the VP wing just houses obviously rapists and pedophiles, but no. obviously as as we know that you can get gangbangers on there, kids with significant mental health yeah. issues, former yeah, police officers. Former prison officers, etc. Yeah, no, the VP. It's obviously for anyone who does not want to be in general population. Um, I know, like some old Asian guy. I can't remember what jail I was in or whatever. I must have met him at mosque, and he was an uncle. So I started chatting to him, and I was like, "What wing are you on?" And he ended up being in the nonce wing, and I'm looking at him like, "Oh, is he one of them ones?" Mm -hmm. And then I was like. What you you know what what you what, you, what happened, Uncle? What are you here for? And he's there was something passport thing, some fraud thing. But I believed him. So yeah, yeah. I was like, Yo, why are you why are you on that wing? He's like, I don't know. He don't know the system. You know, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Don't, he don't know prison. So the the yeah. officers obviously looked at him and thought, you know what, this guy is a vulnerable guy. Mm. Someone's probably gonna, you know, what I mean. They're going to turn him over on the wing. He's better off on the vulnerable prison. Like but. people that have got like learning difficulties or yeah. mentally a bit slow or physically a bit slow. I'll tell you one thing that struck me 
when I've been through the system, I've only been in prison three times, Mickey. But when I've been in prison, the the pop, the elders among the wing, right, the elders, and how the younger prisoners, right, general population, we're talking, we're not talking about obviously non citizen historical sex offenders. We're talking about the elders. There was a guy that was in. He was sixty something year old, sixty eight, sixty nine. And his, he fell out with his daughter and she had like, um, he wasn't allowed to see his grandkid, but he just kept turning up at the school. No, no, no sexual offending. We've seen his paperwork, seen his debts. And the way that he was, he was old, he'd had a stroke. And the youngers gathered round him and stuff. And we protected him. We'd go and get his food for him. If he had any yeah, yeah, shit, if, if, if anyone gave him any shit, they would have got dealt with quick time. Because we sort of, even though we're cons, we still have those values where we respect our elders, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, and you know what? I must say, surprisingly, even in Scrubs, it was still like that. Um, yeah. So I'm actually, I'm glad uh, because there was a, there was an old fella in there. He was doing, I think, maybe 12 years or 16 years. He was doing a lump. He still had like five years left when yeah. I was speaking to him. And he was in a wheelchair. He was on the ones, old fella, had a breathing. You know, when he'd come out... Got yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. Thing. But yeah, same thing. People would take his, get, get him his food. And I'd always take the time out whenever I see him chat to him. It's an uncle, isn't it? So you got to, yeah, you yeah. know. But yeah, one thing for sure, I can gladly say that prison hasn't killed that. There's still respect. They're, you know, for the elders, it's still there. Mm. If he was in charge of the system, if he was in charge of the prison system tomorrow, a uh, Majesty Prisoner of Probation Service, what overalls, what would you change about the system for the better? Whether whether it's to reduce reoffending, whether it's to reduce, I don't know, suicide within prison, which is something that you've experienced with, with a friend of yours, I think you said when you was in Lewis. Or Lewis. Yeah. Um, how would you change the system? I know it's, it's probably a very hard question to answer, but... Uh, you know what? No, the, the easy answer would be better trained staff. A thousand percent. Mental health because, services would... Yeah, yeah in, in, in all aspects. Uh, Main thing, the mental health side of things, like I said, in scrubs, there was, you know, they would regularly, or I looked at it as abusing uh, a guy like two cells away from me. He, he he had mental health issues. You could tell he was tapped. And they're constantly belittling him, swearing at him, you fucking cunt, you're not getting your lunch today, ha ha. Like, I saw it with my own eyes to the point mm. where I remember coming out my cell the next day and pulling the free officers because I could say, I was like, hey, come here. What are you not doing? Are you are you outside his cell saying he's not getting his food? Calling him a cunt. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of... He's got mental health issues. You're laughing at him. Do you know what I mean? Are you not equipped to do this job? Clearly you ain't. You're in the wrong job, mate. You know, like... And it, he was one of the reasons that I was on that net. And that, that one guy, he don't even... I promise you, I don't even know his name. Yeah. You know, anytime... Anytime I'd see him having some type of commotion with the screws, I, I remember saying to him, I was like, you know what? Don't ask them for anything. You need anything, you come see me. The only thing I don't have is the keys. Anything yeah. else you need, you need a vape, you need juice. I don't even want it back. Yeah. Don't ask them for anything from now on. And the, and I said this in front of the screw. And she's just like, didn't she's half embarrassed. I'm like, don't chat to them. Come see me. You know, like, why do what's, I, the, what's the world coming to when you've got prisoners pulling officers about their behaviour towards convicts, towards prisoners? Regular. In in the block, they hated me in Wormwood Scrubs block. Yeah? yeah? They let me go a day early. I promise yeah. you now, I I'd, I'd wait till Noor comes out. One of my pals is coming out. He'll be out yeah. probably in the next week. He, he got yeah. beat up by the screws in the block while I was there. Um, yeah. And anyway, the screws in Tim, like the guy, the guy next door to me is on suicide watch. Yeah. Yeah. And what this guy done is he unplugged his phone from outside. Yeah. The guy's already on suicide watch and you're unplugging his phone. So as soon as I can hear, I'm, I'm on the buzzer. So I'm like, yo, are you feeling all right? What do you do? Plug his phone back in. He's on suicide watch. He's already going through some shit. He's in the block. And you're outside his door, belittling him, swearing at him, unplugging his phone. Plug it back in now. Brother, can I just stop you there? You say, how important is that phone line when you're feeling that low and, uh, and suicidal and you're on suicide watch? That phone line, how, how important could a phone call potentially be between life it, and it, death? It's, it's life-saving, it's life man. That, that, them phones there, 
they, they, come on, just to, just to know that I could ring my kid at any time. You know, I could. I don't need to wait till I get unlocked to go land, stand in line to use their phone anymore. They're in my cell. You know, even though mobiles yeah. were, but that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I could ring, pick up my daughter. I, I could ring up the phone before my kid goes to school and ring my child while they're on the school. You know, like these things, I used to live for that. My day would be like, okay, they're in the car at eight o'clock, 8.05, ring the phone. It'll be on speaker. I'll be talking to everyone in the car. Then I know they get picked up from school at this time. That was my connection to, you know, to the world, man. I'm, I feel like I'm there, you know, in the car. They're all going to school. They got kiss on and I'm just bubbling away chatting. It, 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 bear in mind, when you're on the phone, I tend to feel that I'm not in prison anymore. You know, at that yeah. time, I've got my eyes, my eyes closed, my feet up, and I'm just chatting away. You know, you, you, it's an escape from prison. It's very, very important. because You agree that, that if you were suicidal, though, and you make that call, just to have that phone call, to know that your light at the end of the tunnel, your family ties, family ties are so important whilst you're in prison. I genuinely believe it can be the difference in certain prisoners between life and death. Because if you take that support network away, their heads could just go. And they might think that say say the relationship broke down, they could see suicide as a way out. They might come from a broken home. So the importance of mail, email a prisoner, phone calls. I genuinely believe that it it's something that it's integral to getting through a jail sentence. I believe it's the light at the end of the tunnel. It's that reason to go another day. Yeah, and email a prisoner, phones. Without a doubt in my mind, they have saved someone's life. A million percent, yeah. a thousand percent. You, know I mean? you could have been, someone could have been going through some shit, whatever's going on in his head, and he's got a letter come through, he's got an email come through from his loved one, could be from his child, or whatever. I know that they've saved lives, you know, the connection to the outside, and because you can get lost in there, you know, like the this six and all, I'm not going to lie, I've done a lot of jail, yeah, a lot of jail, but this, the last six and a half months in scrubs during the COVID lockdown affected me mentally. Like it, I'm still not a hundred percent where I was, but I'm getting there. But yeah. yeah, I was, when I first come home, I was tapped. Like I was a bit, you know, I'd say to my missus, I'd say to everyone like, yo, I need space. You, right you're, you need your own time sort of thing. Yeah. Cause like, obviously I've just come out of scrubs. Yeah. I'm on the, I'm on the worst wing. In a notorious jail. In a notorious jail, dealing with the worst screws, mm. with money on my head, you know, people trying to kill me. Like, yeah, I, I, it, it fucked up my head. Like, my cellmate, would one of my cellmates, I was just pacing the cell. I was just pacing, pacing. This is a new kid. One of my cellmates gone. New kid just come in the cell. Bless him. First time in jail. Yeah, yeah. He's got some big Asian guy. And the thing is, when they first brought him to my door, I was trying to get my pal in there. And yeah. So Jackie's like, and I'm like, look, I already spoke to you about getting my pal in there. We'll get him in there for now, but later on, mm. he swaps with my mate. So she's like, no. This kid hasn't even come in my cell yet. I'm like, what? Now I've gone in Q mode. What do you mean, no? I'm a savage, you know. He's not coming in. Yeah, yeah. Now this kid standing in front of my cell like this with his head down. I'm like, he ain't coming in. What? What are you going to do now? Obviously, if it's not getting sent, I'm changing the script. What are you going to do? He's not coming in. What? Then when he's gone, bro, I'm just trying to do my time, get my head down. And I thought, oh my. Now I feel like a dickhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like an asshole because I got this poor kid scared outside my door because yeah, yeah. this officer does not know how to behave. So straight away, I've looked at him. I was like, bro, I'm so sorry. He's got nothing to do with you. Come in. He's probably yeah. shitting himself, brought to your flat, opens the door, big Q standing there, yeah. henching the fucking door, okay. kicking off because Q wants his boy over. Yeah. He's trying to, who was it? White kid, black kid, mixed race. Yeah, little, kid. Little, white, little white kid. Little, little white, white kid. kid man. And big Q's at the door there. Yeah, experience brother. First time. Bet the kid's ass was going, brother. Yeah. So when I've realised, like, this kid's scared now, yeah, I've mm. just thought, I'll deal with the screw in a minute. I've looked at the kid. I was like, you know what, bruv?
sorry, man. Like, yo, it's got nothing to do with you. You, you like, she just got to figure, you know, learn how to behave herself. So I've got yeah. bruv just coming in it. And he's like, right. half like, I was like, bro, I'm sorry. That shouldn't have happened. You're in, like, you're good. So anyway, I cook food in the show. You know, like, yeah, he yeah. knows man's pattern because every few minutes someone's coming to the door. Q scan and con, you're right. You know, everyone, every time someone go past, they're busting the flat. What's going on? You're right. I'm like, bro. Mm -hmm. And I let him know. I was like, look, bro, you're good. Ain't, ain't nobody troubling you on this wing. Yeah, yeah. You just, you've landed in the best cell. You're eating good food every day. I'm cooking Man's for it. I was cooking you know? in the kettle and stuff. I yeah, saw, like, I saw one of them videos you, as well, bro, you, back in yeah, the day. You, you one come to the right the cell. Yeah. And then you I come to the right video. cell with pattern. Anyway, now, the officers at this time were really pissing me off. Yeah. Lesniak, the way they was talking to inmates and all of that. So now I'm getting agitated in my cell because the way they, I can hear them talking to other people and they, I can say, yo, did you just hear that? Did she just... So now I'm pacing back and forth in my cell, just going mad, waiting for the door to unlock, which is probably not getting unlocked till the next day. Yeah. yeah. And in my head, I'm like, wait till I see her. Wait till I... Because now that's all I was doing. I was just put... Officers wanted to avoid me because they know, like, if, Q's, if Khan's calling you, yeah... You're about to get your fucking asshole ripped open. Yeah, like, but I do it in a nice way. I do it. I know how to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yelling, yelling and screaming. I don't yell and scream at them. They're not. I chat. You don't anyway, get nothing, bro. To... You don't get nothing that way, though, do yeah. you? And you know, I've I noticed when you talk to them in a calm and collective way, and you let them know what's going to happen, they they tend to believe you. Um, but yeah, so I'm just pacing back and forth in my cell every day. Every like I'm just pacing, pacing, pacing. What what was the regime like, bro, during this COVID lockdown? 22, 23, 23 and a half hours locked up at Worm I, wish, I wish. Go on. Monday. Monday, you get unlocked. We get unlocked at eight o'clock in the morning till eight thirty. On the Tuesday, we get unlocked at two thirty in the afternoon. So well over twenty four hours straight, riding bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And yeah, that gets to you. Eating in your so cell, what? brother. There, eating in your cell at Scrubs. Yeah, yeah. They bring the food to your door. That's how they was even bringing the food. You we weren't even coming out for our food. They was bringing food straight to your door. You know, even when you come out for your food, that's an extra 10, 15 minutes and all that. Now nah, to your door. Um, but yeah, as as I got this kid in my cell, I'm pacing back and forth, back and forth. And my my daughter says it as well. I've got a I've got a mean looking face for some reason. I don't, and that's how God's made me. He's that, you know what I mean? It's how he's made me. But I tend to look like I'm always angry and I'm not. But yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, at this point, I always was. So I'm walking back and forth pacing. And I've realized I must, and I've looked at him and he looked scared on his bed. Yeah. And I thought, oh shit, what are you doing? Like, I've realized, like, big Asian man marching back and forth in the cell. Oh, for past 45 minutes, this kid is probably thinking I'm going to, do you know what I mean? He's probably thinking so, I'm getting filled here or I'm going to get shagged or something. Because yeah. in the first time, bro, he's thinking, listen, <laughs> I've heard all these horror stories about jail. My man, this big hench fucking Asian kid is either going to fucking shag me or he's going to kick fuck out me and take what yeah. I've got, what little I've got he's got. But what, what I How ended up doing... Up with this kid? How long was he locked up with him for? Well, only for a few weeks. He ended up going Belmarsh. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put the frying pan into the fire. Yeah, they sent him Belmarsh. But mm -hmm. um, luckily, while I was in the cell with him, I thought, you know what? I was actually in tears. I'm not going to lie. I was in tears. And I had to put my kids' pictures up. And I put like four pictures up by the door because I know as I'm walking, I'd see them and it would just cool my heart down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that that probably saved me. Me putting my kids' pictures up probably saved me from snapping someone's neck, to be honest with you. Um because yeah. I got I forgot who I was. I forgot all the work that I do around the world. I just became prisoner A1625 AA. You know, I just and that reminded you me. Your identity, that, you know, because the one yeah. thing because the obviously like when you came out of prison on the last one. We, I was posting. I posted a video when you you was in Lebanon. You was doing humanitarian work. You was giving out food parcels off the back of the lorries. You change. This is a man. This is a man that you're watching, guys. Here that changed his life around you. 
And then his probation officer signed off on this. Yeah, you can go, you go, go, go. You went, was doing the humanitarian stuff, came back and was arrested at the airport, brother. They come pick, come onto the plane, mate. They came come onto, onto the, the plane. plane and wrapped him up. And he spent six the next six months during COVID, away from his missus, away from his kids, in fucking the shit order is scrubs. But the psychological effect, brother, the thing is, right, I've spoken to, I, I've mixed with and met some of the most dangerous kids about, right, and every one of them that's been in jail has said, any man that does an interview or speaks and says that whilst he's been in prison, that he hasn't got emotional and it's got to him whilst he's been in prison, no matter who he is, killers, dangerous, whatever, anyone that says that they haven't hit rock bottom or been emotional in prison is a fucking liar because it eventually it gets to everyone. Some people more than others. Yeah, hundred. I like. Um, I'm a very emotional person, anyway. Uh, I'm an empath, so I try to see what someone's going through. Do you know what I mean? I tend to. That hence why when I was seeing the guys with mental health issues get abused and other people get abused, it was bothering me. That the, you know, I tell you that that's what was getting me angry. Like I'm raging. I'm like, that's someone's son. How can you treat him that way? You know, and yeah. Um, like, I was there, so I'd get emotional. Like, obviously, I ain't seen my kids. There was no visits, no, you know, nothing. I, I ain't seen my kids, man. Like, that was a big thing. My son was with me every day. Like, just like he is now. Now I'm home, he's with me every day. Like, my little baby boy, 8 in the morning, from 8 in the morning to about 1 in the afternoon, he's with daddy. So now I'm, I've lost that connection. I've already spent years of my life already away from my other kids. I never thought that that my baby boy, I, I would be, you know, I would be going back to that place. I would never thought that, that yeah. I would end up back in prison. And my, my little baby boy was, for me, I guess, a chance to do it all again, right? You know? Um, Every time you come out, you sound, you sound more determined never to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Alan, and, uh, so whilst you've been in prison, you've got three kids, like I said, you've got two two sons and a daughter. And a daughter, yeah. Whilst you've been in prison, how much of your children's lives have you missed from, like, first words to first steps and things like that? Wow. wow. Um, luckily, I was there for the first steps and that, because I went to jail when my daughter was one. I came out when she was four. Yeah, birthdays, Christmases. Everything, you know. Um, yeah, I missed my, my daughter. You know, she's 16 now. She's going to be 16 this year. And she's probably the one that I've let down the most. You know. Has it affected been, her? Do you see in her mentality and oh, her personality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, you know, uh, she's... I, you know, I was obviously I was on heroin and crack cocaine for 10 years. Mm. So she had to live with... A nitty as her dad, you know, uh, yeah. which has to be embarrassing for any kid. Mm. And to now, now she looks at it as nothing I do is ever going to be good enough because I can do, I can help people around the world, I can do all of that, but I can't change the fact that I missed out on all her, you know, her years growing up. It's She's sad, doing... isn't it? But this is the thing, and, and you lose it for what, bro? For, for jail to jail, bro. Years that you're never going to get back, man. And this is the thing. This is why, like we, we said in the first video about people that want to go. Like I said, we did a video earlier, guys, saying that if you're talking to Q, if you're talking to a 15 year old kid now that wants to go down the drug route, firearms, and all that stuff, what would you thought to say, sort of thing? And you, you was like, don't do it. Are you there, Q? Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was just reading sorry the Just froze a second there. So, yeah, there was a kid there that asked, what is Scrubs? There was a, just a bit further up. If you scroll up, uh, Golden Virginia said, what is Scrubs? I'll let you explain, brother, what Scrubs is short for. Scrubs is short for Wormwood Scrubs, Mr. Golden V. Uh, Wormwood Scrubs is the infamous prison in West London. Uh, if you've ever seen the original film, The Italian Job, uh, in the beginning, that's where they masterminded the whole uh, whole thing. But yeah, Scrubs is renowned, man. Everyone's been there. Anybody who's anyone from uh, back in the day, gangsters, from the craze to, you know, all the... London firm. Yeah. Yeah, all, Someone here says there, Chris says, don't, 
don't you just respect you for how really he's admitting his faults, fair play. We went pretty deep there, brother, when you're talking about your, your daughter specifically, but your kids in general. Yeah, and listen, we don't care about people's opinions. If you want to hate, you want to laugh, you do what you're doing, mate. That's that's on no, you. No, he, no, he was being re yeah, yeah. respectful, saying, like, fair play to you for, for admitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shaf is in. Assalamu alaikum. There you go, brother. Wa alaikum salam, my brother Shaf. What's happening? Uh, but yeah, but quickly, yeah, for, for anybody who is watching, um, who has anything negative to say, who has any negative towards anything that I say, that's on you. I, I'm not bothered in the slightest. Feel free to call me any name under the book, do all of that. I'm quite happy and content with who I am. So mm -hmm. yeah, you do you, man. Don't worry about Positive that. Positive vibes, brother. Do you know what? When people are negative, brother, it speaks more about them than it does about That's us. That's it. Like, you you got your own issues that you need to deal with. And hopefully one yeah. day Cody will come on in and you can deal with them issues, mate. You know? That's it, brother. Well, like I'm I said, do you know what? The one thing, Q, by having you on the channel, if you look, if you type in in the search bar on YouTube, Cody Lachey, Big Q, you'll see countless videos of you from humanitarian work to cooking in a kettle to prison footage that you got through a third party to these videos <laughs> before you know Turkish board yeah, are really man. awesome for that looks but Q what I was going to say to you what did right I don't know whilst you was in prison on this last stretch the, the, there's a new there was a new craze that was out there I, I posted them on the channel and what it really angered me because it was prison officers doing these TikTok videos outside jails right rehearsing them they're supposed to have done it on the dinner break, but they was picking songs, they was doing rehearsals, and then outside the prison, they was doing all these TikTok videos while you and the other 80-odd thousand prisoners that we've got in the system were locked up 23, 23 and a half hours a day, right? Okay. Locked up, and they're doing TikTok videos outside. I'll send you some links after to some of the videos. It, it, I found it disrespectful, I found it rude, extremely, and I found it unprofessional. Extremely, extremely, extremely. So these people, while we're in there, because this is another thing that I, I would say – to prison officers, because they'd be like, I'd, I'd be like, well, you're getting paid off of people's misery. And they'd be like, well, I didn't put you here. I'd be like, yeah, but you still chose to make a living off me being here. You yeah. know, that, that's so, fuck them. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Like, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, unprofessional you know, to death. And like I said, he, prisoners are not allowed to see their kids and all this. And all these prison officers that are supposed to be social distancing. There wasn't social distancing for the most part. And they was doing these silly TikTok dances. And you could see that they put time in it to research. They were doing rehearsals and stuff. That There was appalling uh, cue. I can't tell you how bad they was. But the fact is, they, they were synchronised in what they were trying to do. And I looked and thought, there's kids there. You could see you could see cell windows. On the, in, like They was even doing it outside the prison or on one of the yards. And you could see yeah. the, the, the prisoners in the cells, mate. And I'm thinking... Hang on, they're sat there. Their mental health will be going through the mile. They've not seen the kids. Like, there's kids that are taking... How many suicides... I sent you that footage, in from your yeah, wing. That, my, pal, that, my pal made that, that video. I've already... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that was right. That was, you know... Um, was it the wing below yours? Was you on the threes or the fours? No, I was on the twos. Right, that yeah, yeah. video was made on the threes and the suicide yeah. happened on the fours. This is the thing. Uh, and the thing is, they were literally, for those that don't know, uh, there was a body, there was a, there was three or four short clips, 10 seconds long, and there was a body bag with a prisoner in it being pretty much dragged across the floor. Pretty much in it, Q, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing um, is, while we're doing this, we're trying to read the comments as well, guys. Yeah, this is the first time <laughs> I've done this. And the thing is, you're trying to catch this because you want to interact with what people are asking. Yeah, but that's we're it. also free flowing as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Do both. I'm yeah. not. Because the thing is, you might get we might get subscribers asking Q. If you've got any questions for Q, guys, get them in now. He's here. He can see the Feel comments. Free. Feel free. Um, and then what what we should do, Q, is every few days if we could do something like this, just do a live, bang it out there when you've got time. I know you're working and stuff like that. I mean, even Q now, guys, he's free uh, and he's not even gone home. He's literally in an hotel as we speak. So he's given us his time, which I'm very grateful for. And I'm not the best at asking questions. I talk too much. But me and Q are sort of in the flow when we're just talking and then the comments are sort of coming up. Yeah, what's this? Q actually seemed like a sound guy. He's obviously made a mistake in his life, haven't we all? Um, he's a unit. I agree. Kids change your life. I would be lost without my little girl, mate. Thank you very much, honestly. Um, Positive vibes, man. Yeah, the, uh, I'd be like, you know, my kid, you, I, when I talk about my kids, I get emotional. 
I generally yeah, bro, you do. You can hear it in your voice, bro. You go to you go to that place. Yeah, um, you know, I've hurt my kids a lot, man. Uh, my daughter, you know, fourteen. She's fourteen now. I've spent. No, sure, she's gonna be sixteen. Wow, look at that. That's how bad of a dad I am. I said she's fourteen. It's cool, bro. Um, it was a slip of the tongue. But uh, yeah, I've spent maybe seven or eight years of her life in jail. Ten of those years, I was a heroin addict. You know, she's. I've stolen from the family. They've they've gone to the mums for the weekend, come back. The TV's gone. The PlayStation got like. Yeah. I was a scumbag, uh, and I hope that you know one day I can make it up to her. I'm trying. I'm mm. trying. I even built a school in Bangladesh and named it after my daughter. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm. and still that don't mean nothing to her. She don't. The thing know. is, though, brother. The thing is, now she's young and she, she'll have that. She'll have that chip on her shoulder. But it's not how you start the race; it's how you finish the race, brother. Yeah, and yeah. We've got a long time to go, man. Uh, and at the same time, her friends are on my side. Her, her, fr her friends all love me. She says yeah, yeah. she said to me the other day, which is I found I actually because she she's very rarely nice to me. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's my daughter. I love her. But uh, yeah, she said to me the other day. She goes, "I show my friends all your videos. They all love you. I don't know why." But I think she's, you know, secretly saying she's she proud of you. She secretly loves it. She loves it, bro. But yeah. she's, she's being that sort of girl sort of thing where... But like I said, brother, so with the, with, with the addiction, how did that addiction start? Who introduced you to it? Uh, excuse me one second. Let me just stick this on charge. Um, go to tell you the truth, it was my own fault. Uh, was it a case you got high on your own supply or was it just... Yeah, I, 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 I was 22. I, I just got a six-year sentence. Yeah. I'm in cold and leave. I mean, HMP cold in the, um, I started selling drugs in there, uh, as you do. Yeah. And, uh, I'll smoke weed every day, you know, like I'm doing probably 50 quid a day on weed in there. Uh, yeah. but I was making money, so it didn't matter. Yeah. And then the weed ran out, parcels dried up and there was yeah. no weed for a good, maybe not, maybe not even a week, but I'm such a, you know, an idiot. But I still had gear. I had, I probably had like half ounce of heroin on me. So yeah. I remember when I was younger, when I was selling it on the roads, I asked one of my my customers, I was like, what's it like? Like heroin. And he said, well, it's like weed times 100. Yeah. So that stayed in my head. So straight away, like as I'm in my cell, I remember it. I, I, I'll never forget that day. And I thought, yeah, let me try this in a, in a spliff. So I rolled a little heroin spliff, smoked that. And I remember just throwing up bleh, and it was the maddest rush ever. And that was it. I was hooked from that day. That first, that first like split of the brown. From and that you was first gone. split, that was it. That was it. I was gone. I was gone. Yeah, man. Well, um, the, the thing is, obviously, and I'm ashamed to say this, brother. I, it wasn't my operation, but I ran an operation for some Asian kids in Rochdale, a big Asian community, and they was moving on a national scale, cracking heroin. And that's what I got involved in. Now, at the time, I was making money, I was debt collecting, I was running their whole operation. What I didn't see was the damage it was doing to, to families. To It yeah. was fueling the cycle of crime. Obviously, when you come away from it, you can see the wood for the trees. You can see it in hindsight. But when you're involved, you cannot see the wood for the trees, should I call it. No, and uh, it's funny you say that, because my mum actually said to me, when I was in the height of my addiction, she said to me, she goes, look how God's repaying you. All that yeah. suffering that you caused people in all them years that you sold drugs. Yeah. You're now putting your mum through the same thing you put people's mums through. Do you know what? And, it's like karma. People call that karma, wouldn't they? Yeah. 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 But that, and, the, um, thing is, the way that you went when you said that then about your mum. You could hear how it's it struck a nerve with you and stuff. You can hear you, you, you go to some like emotional place in your mind, just as I would, where you're reliving that moment. Yeah, because I mean, you know, it was a very shameful time in my life um, to hit rock bottom. You know, I, I've been to jail for shoplifting before. You know, yeah. shoplifting feeding meat. that feeding the habit. I've been to jail for shoplifting meat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, does it get any lower than saying that? No, I'm still above a pedo and a sex offender. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it don't get any lower than that. 
you know, proper being the bottom of the barrel. Um, what was your what did you shot with, bro? If you don't mind me asking, in that on that one occasion, anything, anything and everything, meat, anything coffee. and everything. I would walk in the HMV. First, mm. I'd go on CEX's website, Kex or wherever the sex or where the shop is. Yeah, yeah. I'd find, yeah, out, yeah. I'd find out Blu-rays just came out. And I'd find yeah, out yeah. What, what what they were giving for Blu-rays and box sets. So some of them, they were still giving you like 18, 19 quid. Yeah, to get a bag. Some, yeah, and some of them. So what I would do, I'd go in the HMV. Mm. No mask or no nothing. Mm. With a red G-Lay on, I had a red Ralphie G-Lay, bait as yeah. ever. And I'd yeah. walk in, I'd load up the bag with all the Blu-rays, yeah, yeah. wave at the HMV stuff, Man. and walk out. And I would do that every day in the mornings. You know, first thing, boom, go hit HMV. But all they did was they just took the CCTV of every single time I'd done it yeah. and just picked me up the once. I'm like, yeah, you done 20 from this HMV. Because I was hitting all the different HMVs in the area. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I would, but at the same time, I was an opportunist. I would, I'd shoplift anything. You the know, thing is, people, though, brother, like I said, I, my real dad, I found him a few years ago after 27 years, found out he's an alcoholic. Uh, my sister, she's got mental health issues. She takes drugs. She's an alcoholic. Um, the thing is, like I said, with addiction, it's no laughing matter. It really is. Like I say, so, so it wasn't for you. It wasn't a case of self-medicating for, for things that had happened in your childhood. It was just you, you just getting high on your own supply. You're in jail, and then you just thought, right, I'm going to try it 100 times better than weed or 100 times like more like weed, and then you've tried that spliff, and then he just hooked you that one time. <laughs> yeah, man, no, no, I was just but trying yeah, to read some of the, the some of the comments. Yeah, some of the comments. Yeah, that was it, man. Um, but they say because obviously we have opiate receptors naturally mm. in our body, uh, yeah. in our brain. So yeah. it's a chemical, and um, I think the I think it's the the chemical that that gives you happiness or joy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you you just flood it, and then you're not able to. Firstly, it's physically addictive. If yeah. you don't get it, you're in withdrawals. You're 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 gonna yeah. have to. If you don't know about heroin withdrawals, you're gonna have shits, uh, cramps. You're gonna be so sweating, you're gonna be hot, cold, le restless leg syndrome, yeah. insomnia, running. You know what I mean? Um, it's 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 one of the worst things. But yeah. And then you've got the mental side of it where you don't – the only way your chemical is – you're going to get the, the chemical for endorphins, I think it's called, for yeah, happiness, yeah. is when you're using. Um, yeah. And that still takes your brain a long time to adjust to. Uh, I know that. Because like, whenever, whenever I would go to prison, I would get clean. Yeah. I, I would never do subutex. I didn't do methadone. When I go jail, I would do cold turkey. Yeah, yeah. Rattle, I'd literally rattle it out, come out two weeks later, and back to normal, start training again, eat my food, you know, get yeah. back to, and then as soon as I would get released from jail, I'd go straight back to destroying myself, you know? So it's weird, because a lot of people, see, that's a role reversal for a lot of people. A lot of people go to prison, having never taken drugs in their life, and become addicts as a coping mechanism because they can't deal with their surroundings. They're trying mm. to escape the four walls. Yeah. But you actually went to prison to detox yourself. Yeah. To, to yeah. So use the option to go cold turkey. Yeah. So obviously, so no, I, spray, I, no methadone, no nothing. None of that. Cold. I'm not. Wow. I, you know, I had a thing about I'm not lining up in the morning to get my meds. Yeah. I'm not doing. You know, um, I'm not. I guess it was a like in a way like I'm not having people look down on me. A pride thing. Yeah, but don't get it twisted. I would tell people, you know, if I heard someone, man, I tell you this in jail, that if I heard someone calling someone a nitty or a junkie, yeah, I'd be like, you what? I'm a junkie. What? You're going to get fucked up by a junkie? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't allow them. So I wouldn't go on that line, but at the same time, I'm not going to let no one chat shit about them either. Do you know what I mean? I would let you like, what? Yeah, I smoke food. You're going to get fucked up. You're going to come at it. Yeah. But... But only because it was my truth and I wouldn't let no one, I wouldn't hide it. Do you know what I mean? I would not, I'm not, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but well, yeah, no. Nah, but... That's the thing on it. It's fucking, addiction's no laughing matter. And like I said, looking back on the time, because the thing is, for those that don't catch the first bit, Q'd actually been involved with selling Class A's and everything, firearms go hand in hand with Class A's, but then ended up becoming hooked 
on the brown, on the heroin, which I remember at a time, heroin was the most addictive substance known to man because it's an opioid, isn't it? It's, it's from the poppies, from uh, poppy seeds and all that, isn't it? From coming yeah. from Turkey, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, things like that. Yeah. It was the most addictive substance known to man. Um, I, I was in prison with a kid who was could tell that he'd been hooked on the brown for a long time, brown, white, whatever he could get his hands on. I walked into his cell and he was chasing the dragon one day. I went in another day and he was just blipped. And I said, what's up with you? I spoke to him the next day and he, he, he said, I've tried the spice to get off the heroin. I said, and what's happened? He said, now I'm addicted to spice. And it was such a, because he's such a nice lad. And do you know what? I love the guy, but I couldn't have him in my cell because if I turned me back to make a brew, I know he'd rob from me. And, it, and, and the thing is, I don't look, I, I'm no one to judge. We're all in prison. We're all, the only people I judge are sex offenders and rapists, paedophiles and rapists. Yeah. That is it. Um, but yeah, I couldn't have him in my pad because I knew he'd nick from me. And he didn't want to steal, but he needed that drug. Q, there was someone further up, International Baba Ray, commented, I'll scroll up and I'll read the message from International Baba. She said, my younger brother recently got sent to Scrubs. I've done my research and I came across Big Q. I personally messaged him on Instagram and he gave me full advice and he even told me to tell him to come on to A-Wing. That yeah. was... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, though. This channel, right... Q's not getting paid. I don't get paid. All we do, we're trying to educate yeah, people. Yeah. We're trying to deter people. Listen, um, anybody, at any time, if you need any advice, you need someone to chat to, hit me up. If I, I'll if put I've your link to your time, Instagram in the, in the title. Yeah, if I've got the, the time, I'm going to reply. If I don't have the time, I'll get to you eventually. And um, all we're trying to do is help people, man. And yeah, Anybody, if you know anybody going into scrubs, their first time at jail or anything like that, hit me up. A wing, we got it on smash. They'll be okay. Just hit me up, man. But yeah, international barber, uh, you don't need to thank me. This is what I'm supposed to do. You know, yeah, we're supposed to help people. The thing is, Q, someone said there, have you ever tried spice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen. We need to. I use spice to get off. The, this is what I'm saying. We were just about to. Okay, so when I go to jail and I do my cold turkey. It's not cold turkey. I'm smoking mm. spice. That's how I was coping with the mm. heroin withdrawals. Yeah. Um, you have to understand, when spice first come about, you see all these videos you see of people or having fits and all of that. Yeah. That's because they're not smoking the spice. Problem. Obviously, when spice first came about, it was a cannabis substitute, herbal, mm. whatever. And yeah. uh, so I'll tell you the first time how I got spice. We didn't even know what spice was. I got an, um, I rang up my pal. I'm in Lewis. I can't remember what year this was. This was bef like, yeah, 2009, 2010. And I rang up my pal. I had a little link, and I was like, "Look, I need to drop off an ounce of weed for me." He was like, "Cool, no problem." He's like, "I just got some black mamba for the guys in Ford. One of my pal was in Open Joe. He goes, "Look, I just got him an ounce of black mamba. I'll get." What do you think of that? And I've gone to him, look, I don't care what you call it. I don't mm. care what the name is. I just need an ounce of weed. Yeah? So he's then got me an ounce of this black mamba. But obviously, I don't know that it's spice. So I've yeah, got yeah. this ounce in. I remember rolling the joint. I'll stand up for this one. Yeah. I remember rolling the joint. And I'm standing in my doorway like this. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I promise you, I ended up giving it all out. I didn't How want did it. How you feel, bro, on that first hit, right, the next day, if you were to describe, I don't know if you can even describe, how do you describe that first hit, that first blast of that? I class it as a devil drug because yeah. I've seen what it does to people. Yeah, of course, of course. Because at that time, it looked like weed. So I just put a little bit in a joint. But I remember it was like I was looking at myself, if you know what I mean. Like you was out of body experience. Yeah, yeah, it was mad. That's yeah. what... The, I think spice clicked something in my brain because obviously then I've gone back to heroin and all of that. And a few, this is when we didn't know what spice was. And obviously a few years later, now spice is rife. Um, and I remember doing my cold turkey in jail. Yeah. And I, I'm smoking spice and I'm looking in, in, in the mirror. And it was like, I was crying. It was weird. I, I like yeah. so, I got this mirror in front of me, single cell, yeah, big mirror, and I'm just crying, looking at myself, and I'm like, "You're like a stick," 
uh, I, I was literally probably about 10, 11 stone. Mm. And I was just like, wow. Then that's, that's when it's all come to me like, yo, hold on. You've been a heroin addict for 10 years. Mm. Oh my God, Q, you're a nitty. You know, I remember like mm. I'm talking to myself, spiced out of it. Like, Q, you're a nitty, bro. What the fuck? And it's like, what the fuck? It was mad. But so I, that's what clicked something in my brain that yeah. time. And that was it. I never went back. Like I was done. I, I had, I've had a few slips with heroin from when I first got off here, but that was it. You know, that was, I was done. You know, that part of my I, life. But I remember, so my mum had a friend who had a house and she ended up in prison. She ended up in style prison, right? This was many, many years ago, early to probably mid 2000, 2006, 2007. And I, she said, oh, she said, you can move in. But the two lads that also live there, smoke weed. He was full-blown heroin addicts, brother. Now, they used... I, I remember talking to this kid, and I seen him with a citric acid, and they were shooting up where you were smoking it. Um, and I said, what does it make you feel like? I said, it makes you feel like you're wrapped in cotton wool. And they used to go out grafting all night, ca literally cars, fucking, fucking uh, garages, whatever they could get their hands on. And then I came back one day. A dealer put me door through, right? So I, I wasn't in because I would have had it with a dealer. And then I've cut the kids come home and I just ended up fucking hammering this kid. I said, get your stuff and get the fuck out. And that was it. And then I ended up moving and got a new gaff and moved out and everything. But um, the thing is, they've got to steal to, to get that hit. It's just the first thought and the last thought is I've got to score because other, they get, like, like you said, the withdrawals are so bad if you were not on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The withdrawals, uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm a bitch. Hold on, Q. Oh, hold on. We might have lost Q, guys. We might have lost Q. We might have lost Q. Fuck. Yeah. No, hold on, you're I there, Q. Make... Sorry, we got, it froze them for a second, brother. We've got you. Yeah, yeah. No, I see that. But I would make myself go into withdrawals thinking I'm in withdrawals, but I wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? It would just yeah, be yeah. in my like head. A false, like a false withdrawal. Yeah. Your body I'm just playing gonna, on your mind. I'm just going to quickly read some of these. Because I've realised there's like 26 comments. So Can you I thought, scroll on the comments? Can you scroll up? Or if you touch where the comments are, if you scroll up, you should be able to see the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just thought I'd... Uh, there was a guy, there's a guy that's watching right now. He's from America, Q. He, he lives in um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania, he actually says, yeah, PA. Yeah, I grew up in yeah, Jersey. Yeah, oh, yeah, you did. You grew up in the States, brother. Yeah. Well, Q's just... Uh, Dan Robinson, he's called. He's done videos for the channel. Lovely guy. Been a subscriber for a long time. He said he scrubs what... He said it scrubs for people from all over London. Obviously, it's a local, but can you explain what courts are served by? Yeah, no, um, Wormwood Scrubs is uh, mainly for people in West London and North West London. Um, like parts of Tottenham will come scrubs. The other parts will come to Penteville. So, but there's, there's quite a few jails in London now, but the main uh, locals are Wormwood Scrubs, Wandsworth, Penteville, um, and now I think Belmarsh as well, even though it's an A cat, it is yeah. also a B cat local. But um, someone just said there, Q, Wayne Keane has just asked, What does a nitty mean? I don't even know to be honest, it must be a southern term. A nitty is just another term for a junkie, yeah. that's it, you know. Um, yeah, another term for a junkie, the nitty, nitty's on the line, you know, a cat, a kitty, a nitty. Yeah, I don't know where that. it comes from, but yeah. it's one of those and, things, and then, you know? so Q. So you got out a few weeks ago. So what was it? How bad was the... What? What's your thoughts on what are your experiences, whether it's yourself or what you've seen? Mental health in prison, whether that be suicide, self-harm, just just in a um, turmoil, just spiralling. Yeah, I mean, firstly, they need to figure out what to do with people with mental health issues, really, because there's people in prison now who I know for a fact shouldn't be there. Should not be. We're I don't care. What, we're talking psychiatric hospitals. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't care what their crime is. Yeah. I, I know there's guys in jail who don't belong there. They do not belong in general population, walking around the wing with normal people. They 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 need extra care. And prison officers, they're not there to give care. They're there to lock us up. No. So they're not. They're not. Um, they're not equipped to deal with it. To, you know. They don't have the, and at the same time, in order to be a prison officer, you do need to have patience. And unfortunately, yeah. now the patience has run dry. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 
that's that's a that's the big thing, man. They need to figure out what they're doing with the guys with mental health issues because they don't belong on A wing. I'll tell you that. Well, now. What, what are your experiences of mental health in prison? Whether it's you personally or the man over the road from you, the man in the cell next to you, what are your experiences? The the worst things you've seen when it comes to mental health when you've been in prison? Uh, oh, boy, wow, I've seen loads of stuff. Uh, people rubbing feces all over themselves. You know, not even as do. a dirty process, not even as a dirty process, just because they are that mentally yeah, yeah, yeah. gone. But but remember something, even as a dirty protest, in order to do that, you have to be some type of mental. Do you know what I mean? So even if someone's done a dirty protest, they have to be tapped in the head to do yeah. that. You, you, you have to have gone through some shit. They've had to put you through something where you've got to that point where you've now snapped and now you're doing that. So clearly you're not in the right mental state. So, um, but yeah, uh, suicide. I see, I see someone smack, smash their cell up, smash it to pieces. Um, flooding. They broke the sink and everything. And all of it was all flood. Like The thing is, he was above me. So he was a cell above me. So underneath me, like they had to put um, like some sheets outside my door so the water wouldn't come in and, but yeah, the guy went completely tapped. Who was the kid? Who was the friend of yours that you, you mentioned when you was in Lewis, Lewis, and you Lewis said did. he took his own life? He'd been on the buzzer or something. I can't remember what you said, but I think he, I think it was Lewis where he, God bless him, brother. He took his uh, he sought suicide as a way out. Yeah, he um, he was on the, he was on suicide watch. Yeah, and uh, he was actually on the buzzer at the time, so he's on the bell. From what I was told by people who were on the wing, he was on the bell for a good half an hour before they found him. Uh, and his cell was right outside the, the office. So There's no excuse, brother, for that. How can someone, on, obviously, it should be 24-7 odds in that situation, but they haven't got the numbers to, to do that, have yeah, you, brother? Yeah, they, don't, they don't have it. They don't have it. Someone um, asked there, someone asked there, sorry to interrupt you, Q. Someone said oh. there, Tony James asked, um, which prison holds the, the most dangerous prisoners? That's a question for both of us. Cat A's. Um, yeah, uh, the most dangerous is probably going to be... Oh. Go on, brother. Oh, we've lost Q. Hold on, guys. We have lost Q. Completely lost Q. Stay there. Stay there, everybody. One second. We're still getting to terms with this. Hold on. Hold on. Right, Q's phone's not died, so stay there. Go back into the studio one second. Right, guys, this is a new thing we're trying right now. Um, I've tried it the other day. It was a subscriber that told me about this. So I'm very grateful to the subscriber. Q, are you back, brother? Are you back? Add to stream. I was yes, trying brother. To it's all right. Brother, Sorry, we're back. I was, we're trying, back. I was yeah. trying to read the messages, and then yeah, I hit yeah. the end by accident. Sorry, it's I hit over, leave by over, accident. But, um, yeah, the worst gels, swell side. Yeah, HMP swell side. That's really rough. I've got AKA I've got stab people. side, as it's known locally. Yes, that's, down I'm, there. I'm, I've got a few good pals in there now. Um, yeah. Couple of my pals doing big sentences in there. Swell side's bad. Uh, what else? Any young fell felt young offenders, Aylesbury young offenders. Yeah, yeah. Any YL is is yeah, a yeah. Uh, gladiator school. Yeah, yeah. But but saying that, you know, I heard up. I've, I've never done jails up north. I don't know what, but I've heard strange ways is really tough. Strange ways is, yeah. I think this this kid was asking where are the most dangerous prisoners house. So I think he's got. He, he must be talking cat A's. You serial killers. Oh, okay, you, yeah, yeah no, cat it, A's. They, they don't even have to be. What it is? They in order to be in a cat A, you don't even have to be dangerous. You just have to be doing a long sentence. Yeah. But so strange ways, check this, brother. Right, obviously we've got eight cat A's in the UK. Right now, strange ways is actually it's a, it's built to a cat A standard, uh, maximum security. But it actually houses cat A, cat B, cat C. It's only the D wing outer or inner. I always get it mixed up. That that houses. There's only forty cat A's in in strange ways. Okay. okay. But it's not like your white moors or your long latins. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they're the ones. They're the ones you don't want to be ended up in. Belmarsh, I think... brother. Belmarsh, terrorism. Fucking, you've got some serious kids in Belmarsh. I've heard Belmarsh, Monster Mansion, Wakefield, Whitemore, Long Larton, Woodhill, Franklin, Strangeways. Some madness, and all, isn't it? And all them ones you just mentioned, I've got powers in, man. It's That's mad. it, bro. 
It's mad. That's You're seeing all these shells, and I'm like, oh, he's in there. Oh, he's in there. Oh, he's in there. It's it's terrible, man. It's absolutely terrible. Um, what was your lowest moment, Q, when you was in prison? In on any stretch, what's the lowest you've hit? You're a strong. You're you've got positive vibes and stuff, but like I said, prison um, gets you low. What was your lowest? Wow, that's a good question, man. It's a really good question. I, I'm not gonna lie. I've had a few. I've had a few. Um, yeah. When I was doing my six and uh, my missus left me, that was a low point. Yeah. But I was, I was already using heroin by then. Um, yeah. A Dear John letter where you, she writes to you and she says... Yeah, she, yeah, the, the thing is, um, before I, I was very abusive. When I was young, I was very abusive. I was a bully. I, I yeah. drank a lot of alcohol. Um, yeah. So I wasn't good to her. Yeah. So... I think it took her quite a while to muster up the courage to leave me. Um, you did it while you was away from her, while you was in jail. Yeah, yeah, which I which I completely respect. I understand. Yeah. And now she's my best mate. You know, we got. But I understand. We went through. I put her through a lot. I was not someone that I would want my daughter to be with. You know, I'm still not. But when at that point I was, I was a very bad. I was very bad to her. So that was a very low point. Um, but then what she was surprised by is when I was leaving, I said to her, I was like, look, if you find someone else, this is before I come home. Yeah. I was like, if you need anything, let me know. If your partner needs anything, let me know. And she was just like, what? No. <laughs> like, who's this person I'm talking to? <laughs> you know, cause she's expecting me to come out like I'm home now. Yeah. If I find out you're with anyone. No, no, I wasn't. You know, so that that helped me a lot. She was like, "Wow, this this is someone else. This is not the the cue that I know." Um, what else? Heroin, my 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 heroin addiction. No. Uh, doing the withdrawals in jail. Serving your time, being locked behind your door, away from your kids, away from your family, and then dealing with an addiction to, the, to, to, like I said, one of the most addictive substances known to man must have, must have taken, must have been doubly hard while she was in prison. Um, can I be honest with you? It was weird when I, because obviously for after my first time, I would use prison as a way to, to get clean. Mm. So after my first time, whenever I'd go jail, I would be, no, not touching that. No, I'm not like, so in prison, I wouldn't use yeah. There, yeah, there was times I had used, but it wasn't something that I'd go looking for or anything like that. They wouldn't tell the truth. In jail, my mind was clear. I'm, I'm one. I'm on. I'm on training mode. I'm just. My whole day revolves around what I'm going to eat today. I got to have this much grams of protein. I got my creatine in me. I got to do this. I got to go do this workout. So prison for me was a time to heal. So I'd always, I'd always come out in banging shape. And then I would just destroy myself. That's yeah. how. Sorry to interrupt you, Q. John Lucas here. Q, have you got a sock over that smoke alarm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. Prison, bro. That's a prison trick, bro. It's a standard. Got to be Listen. someone just put here. Donkey sock, bro. My man's on it. Where is it? I can't even see it, bro. Where is it at? I can't even see where the alarm's at, bro. Yeah, you don't need to see it. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Do you see the sock? Yeah, man. Do you see the sock That's hanging it. up there? Yeah. <laughs> My dirty work. That's sock, what mate. Look, Look at I'm John Luke is there laughing his head off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, have I? Oh, what am I doing? Am I still there? Yeah, you're still there, brother. You're still there, man. I got you. You see, there's a girl there called Lush Puppy, right? She's from Slowway. Oh, no. Hold on. We've not queued, disappeared again. Knocked himself off. We'll invite him again, guys. Stay there. It's it's trial and error, this, guys. It's different, though, isn't it? It changes the channel up a little bit. One sec. All right, one sec. Let's go back into this. Back into this. Go back to guests. I'm hoping Q's going to pop up right here on the screen, uh, and then we can continue this crazy chat. that we We did 40 minutes on a private, which is unlisted, which is still not showing on my thing, which is quite concerning. Um, but then we started to do this, what we are now, we're an hour and five minutes. So we'll stay there one sec. Hold on. Right, Q's there. He's there. He's there. Stay there, guys. Q is back on, guys. 
Yes, yeah, bro, Tony's, he's, he's Tony... a bastard when you look at them comments, bro. It just you yeah, can knock I, off there. Yeah, I hit the wrong button by accident. Sorry, man. But yeah, quick, uh, Tony. Quick, you have a question. Wanted to know how much you get a week. All right, you get fifteen pound fifty out your privates. That's if you're not enhanced, and then yeah. you get twenty five pound fifty. I think you're if you're not potato chip. I've never been enhanced. Yeah, twenty five fifty, brother. Yeah. yeah, but plus whatever wages you get. Um, I think. Seven pound fifty for a wing cleaner, fifteen pound if you're in the workshop to twenty yes. quid. Yeah. And when I was on remand, obviously you can have a visit every day or two block hour visit a week. I could spend forty seven fifty when I was first remanded queue at Strange Ways. But oh, the wow. thing is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah forty seven fifty. That's so that was that was standard that as standard. Enhanced, yeah, I think it was fifty in enhanced, I think it went up to fifty pound fifty five pound fifty or fifty seven fifty. But the thing is, it's all money in the prison's pocket. They're bulk buying, DHL, bam, bam, bam. They're getting fat and rich through the phone, through like, you've got obviously um, email a prisoner, which I know that's a uh, Unitech, uh, Unilink and all that. It's fucking madness, bro. Just think how lucrative the criminal justice system is. But the thing is, it over punishes, fails to rehabilitate, and they're talking about building more prisons, brother. It's, it's just, prison's not about rehabilitation, in my opinion. Prison no, is a business. Um, Go on. There is no rehabilitation in prison. What rehabilitation is there? They, all the courses they used to do, have all been locked off, um, or they've just been done in certain jails now. Um, before they used to do raps course, PASRO pr prisoners against substance related offending. There were so many. Um, what else? Uh, enhanced thinking skills. There's lo loads of courses offered at the jails I've been to. And then when you'd go again, they'd be like, yeah, we don't do that course anymore. you got to go to Earlstoke to do that, or you got to go. So people who are doing long sentences and trying to get their cat Ds and, you know, do things the right way, they're asked out. They they've got to now transfer over to a jail because on their sentence plan, it says they need to do these courses. So he needs to go to that prison over there to do that course. Then he needs to go to that prison over there to do that course. It's, um, and even that, that's not rehabilitation. That's just him trying to get his decap, you know, just trying to jump that's through. It, but I class them courses, brother, as ticking the box. You're playing the game. I've, I've engaged with the offender management unit because you try, someone just put there, Q sounds like he was in an hotel. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you knew him, mate. What's, yeah, hold on. What's this put? I could listen to Q and Cody till 6am, but got to be up at 7. Cody, you need to get Q on again. He's the best one I've seen. He's so Thank honest. And I, hold on, what does he say there? Well, he's so honest and real. I will catch you both hopefully soon. God bless, brother. You go and get your head down. The, do you know what? This is some. I reached out to Q. How polite is Q? Q was out and about, living his life. And then I just said to him, Q, could we do a video thing like in when, when you get time, thinking in the next week or two? And he said, brother, he said, I'm on my way home now, back to the hotel. We'll do it. And... It's been a trial and everything. It's the first time I've tried it, apart from the other day with a subscriber of mine. And it's worked. It's brilliant. We did a 40-minute one, which was unpublished, unlisted. I'll put that up after. And then we, I just thought, with this one, let's see if we can do a live. And then I could see the comments. Then Q can see the comments. And you're talking and you get lost in the conversation. But then yeah. you've got people here. Someone saying, trying to send £500 each. What's this? Chelsea, okay. those in. Someone said here, Q, someone asked a bit further up, did you ever get caught with any contraband and have it confiscated? Hold on, mate. Go Let on. me show you just the other day. <laughs> Go on. Go Here's on. one I made earlier. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Let me tell you something. I live differently in jail, you know. Yeah, man. I'm, like, I should, I'm, I'm not proud of this. No, no. You've got to do what you got to do to survive, um, though, bro. The hustle is strong. Okay, let's leave that out. That's just something else. All right, so I got free nickings a few yeah. weeks ago for two mobile phones. Yeah. Um, you can't read it all, but that's nicking number one for yeah. one phone. Nicking number two for two phones. And nicking number three for a charger. Um, yeah. And uh, all I did was get seven days CC. You're supposed to get 28 just, days. I know, what CC, I know what CC is, bro. Can you just explain to people what, what, what? cell segregation. confinement is? Segregation. No TV, no nothing. You're in a cell by yourself. Basic talk. 
your 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 um you're coming out your cell just to have a shower. You get an exercise yard, and that's it. Uh, to and I, can I be honest with you? I love the block. I love the segregation unit. I think it's it's re it's needed. You're away from everybody else. Time to reflect, read some books, do some press ups. Yeah, and uh, I need. I definitely needed it after the six months or so I was doing in scrubs. You know, just being around goons all day. Can I be honest with you? Go on. Every day I was coming out my cell. Every single day, when that door's unlocked, I'm stood with my shoes on by the door like this, and they'd unlock. I'd step out. I'd quickly check. There's no one making a move for my cell quickly. Then I'd step back in, gather my stuff, and come out. Mm -hmm. Um, so being in the block <laughs> was a relief. I did not have to watch my back. Do you know what I mean? I didn't have to worry was someone about to run up on me or no, I know this. We're in the block right now. I'm good. Like, so yeah, the seg for me was, was a, a welcome relief, unfortunately, but yeah. Listen, on that note, Cody, I've got to be up for Go work. Go on, brother. Do you know what, brother? Right? Do you know what? I'm very blessed, brother. You can dive off. I'm going to stay on, talk to people for a few more minutes. You just, If you do what you did last time, Q, I'm very grateful for your time, Q. And if nah, you do it on, next bro. time, I think we can take mm. this to the next level. 100%. Prison is, news, prison. Go on. This is just the first time. Um, whenever you need me, bro, you know I'm here. You know, we could do this again. We could do this again tomorrow, the day after, the day after. I'm here, man. You know, I know um, you probably got to be up early for work, brother. He's working. Yeah, yeah. He's out of prison, guys. He's staying in an hotel. My He's bus a good is man. at 704. <laughs> 704 is my bus. Everyone's here, look. Interesting watch. Thanks, Q. Guys, Q can catch up with the thing is later. Send me questions in for Q. Q, you bounce, brother. God yeah. bless. Quickly, um, I'm on Instagram, C U E underscore 201. Um, if you go on Facebook, put in Take Back the Block. That's the Take Back the Block page. My name's Iqbal Khan. I'm here living for the people. I'm out. Peace. God bless you, brother. Safe one for that, Q. Right, guys. Q has been and he has gone. Um, first time we've tried this, guys. Uh, a subscriber was telling me for a long time, try it, try it, try it. Uh, it's, I was there the other day. It clicked into me. I thought, I'm going to do it. Uh, you get a week free, and then it's a paid thing. I wanted to see that it works before I subscribe and start paying. Um, I don't know how it's gauged from you guys' side, how it comes across and things like that. Uh, I'm looking to do the same with Neil Samworth on one of these. Anyone that's got a story that wants to come on and talk, we can do it like this. You can send me videos. I could ask you questions, and then you can just – I ask one question, you answer for however long you want to go. And uh, I just think it's something new to the channel. Uh, 132 subscribers, guys, at 10 past midnight. Um, I should have more, but like I said, it's, the channel is what it is. Um, but hopefully this, the connection is secure. I'm very grateful to the subscriber that told me about StreamYard. Um, and the thing is, I'm going to upload the 40-minute video if it will let me. Um, I don't know if it went to it, because it was an unlisted video. So I don't know if it goes to YouTube or it saves to my phone. I'm not quite sure. Um, but, yeah, I, I absolutely love Q. I want to do one of these with John O. Um, Q, Q's a good guy, man. He's a safe guy. He's very knowledgeable. He's very intelligent. He speaks a, he's, he's a better speaker than I am. I'm a good speaker, but he's a lot more concise and informative. And he just takes the channel to the next level. John O as well. Lily, Neil Samworth, um, Dan Robinson in America. All these people that have been on the channel. Uh, Fraser, da uh, David, I want to get these people on the channel on one of these. I can do a pre-record and then I can go back and blur the face. Or if you want to do a live, we can do a live. Um, it's just trying to take it onto the next level, right? I'm all, guys, these are my plans for the channel, right? The channel's become very boring. It's become very mundane. That's my content, not other people's. John O, Q, Lily, Neil Samworth, right? All these great people that have given me time. The, the, the guy that was in, I can't remember what prison he was in. There's another guy with the beard and the hair. Uh, he did a video as well. And I think that was Wormwood Scrubs. So I want to start doing prison uh, audits. I want to start getting out there doing prison audits. 
Um, I'm going to start interviewing people for my channel. Um, Q's here, guys. There's Q comment in there. But, yeah, so I want to take the channel to the next level with Q, uh, who, like I said, is down there in the comment section. Uh, Q's amazing, and the content's amazing. And as a group and as a, a, as a collective, we're going to try and grow the channel, and we're going to bring people – Look at Q, I, I, how brave you have to be to talk about addiction. And Q's here in the corner, talking about addiction, talking about prison, talking about the effects it had on all these children, but specifically his eldest daughter, uh, who's, like I said, 14, 16 years old, right, to the effects it had on his family. When a man braves his soul like that, and, he, and he's working to, 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 to take on those demons, right, it's a hell of a person, man. And... It grows my channel as well. It, it helps educate people. It hopefully acts as a deterrent to others. It also is informative for people that are going or potentially going to prison. Hopefully that isn't the case. Um, I just want to see how things go, guys. And I, my channel is nothing. It's not about me. It's never been about me. But when you get content on your channel like Q, my God, it is such a blessing because it takes my channel to the next level. And it's not about me. It's about helping other people. My channel has definitely helped people in some which way. Um, but on this note, guys, look, it's quarter past midnight. I've not eaten. I'm absolutely starving. Um, I'm going to bounce off. If you're watching this on Catch Up, put your comments in the comment section below. Uh, there'll be more from me and Q in the future. We're going to cover prison stories. Once I can work it out, you can put my, my picture up here, Q's here, and then you can put like a news story like on the other side or a video and we could watch the video and talk about the, the talking points of that video or a news story about prison or a death in custody, blah, blah, blah. Right guys. God bless everyone for tuning in. Thank you to big Q. The man's a legend. The man is so articulate. Thank you to John O, to Lily, to Neil Samworth, to Fraser, to Danny, uh, to Dan Robinson, to David, um, to, just everyone that's contributed to my channel. And for you guys for subscribing, because my channel's crap, but the content, when you've got people like Q on, is blessed. Um, so I'm going to leave it here, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll put the details in below um, for Q, and I'll catch everybody later. Code it is out.